Hello my soccer universe. Match day three is in the books of the this year's Champions League and I have to say while it was a good one for um, Serie A, only Atalanta losing though heavily, it was a perfect one for the, other, for the two big ones. Uh, La Liga, as we will see, with some sort of lucky results and the Premier League, rather convincingly so, they all get their wins. All get their wins uh, this time around. Um, yesterday was kind of bittersweet for me because probably the best game, at least the one that intrigued me most, was the early game, so I didn't see much from it. That was uh, Ajax against Chelsea. Let's talk about that. Uh, going I will lose my track here a little bit but I will we'll get there uh, Ajax Chelsea was um, at first I would say Ajax was dominant from what I could see from the highlights they even scored a goal that was just by hair of sight it's one of those of sides that I'm sure that before war it would uh, not have been given but it was the right call again yes I'm getting used to it uh, I wish there was like kind of this fuzzy line that takes into account also all the you know measurement errors and uh, frame rate errors blah 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 uh, this is a whole video in itself but yeah it seemed to be offside um, Ajax also had a huge chance in the second half um, with Alvarez, uh, Alvarez header hitting the post but then slowly uh, Chelsea clawed itself back and I think it was much dry and Pulisic of all people that actually made the big stories and I really have to say that uh, towards the end and that's where I saw the game it seemed to me that uh, it's Chelsea and not Ajax who is gonna uh, dominate this one and probably win this one and that's exactly how, how it came with uh, Batshuayi who already had a sitter at least one sitter you can you can argue too um, he converted uh, from a Pulisic uh, assist and it ended 1-0 for Chelsea which throws this group again wide open because that was a game that Chelsea was not necessarily expected to win it shows that this young Chelsea squad is really going places uh, we might be talking about those don't work it's the firefighters driving by I don't know why but there are three cars so quite quite interesting what's happening here so, uh, and in the same group, um, then Valencia played at Lille. And can I first say that uh, I did not like the Valencia kit at all? Uh, I'm already a little bit off put by this year's jersey, although already last year, to be honest, uh, with the orange on instead of black. If that was black, I think it would look fine. But then with orange pants. <sighs> doesn't look good and then against Lille uh, I don't know this was not it was not a look that I liked um, I think Valencia had some initial forays but in the end um, it was Lille that took over and wasted many 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 chances uh, Valencia was just hanging in there and then it happens how it often happens Cherishev gets the goal and gives Valencia a thoroughly undeserved lead um, of course, Lille shocked a little bit by that, but uh, fortunately for, for them, they in stoppage time can find the more than deserved equalizer. There was a quick check where there was offside or anything like that. I liked how the referee, <laughs> when everyone was talking, he was like, hmm, I'm talking, talking, talking. Was always this uh, just I absolutely love that so, so um, with that uh, Valencia draw now it is Ajax and Chelsea on top and Valencia is now uh, with four points in third and then um, Lille got their first point yesterday um, maybe for Ajax and that's the perspective that I'm not looking at because I yeah out, out of that group I it clearly like Ajax the best um, it was good that Valencia drew there. I has to be said that for them that, that that's good. And at the moment, you will probably say, yeah, Chelsea and Ajax are gonna do that one. Um, just one last thing on jerseys. 
why is Chelsea not playing in blue uh, in Amsterdam? It can only be because we want to sell those jerseys. Uh, the other early game, uh, I saw the two goals for Leipzig in replay. So it was uh, Leipzig against Zenit at home. Uh, Zenit taking the lead, but then in second half the two Austrians, Lima and Sabitzer, turned the game around for Leipzig. And so uh, Leipzig gets another win. Um, and in the same group, Benfica took a very early lead that was then equalized uh, by Lyon. Um, and <laughs> Lyon is one of those teams that I also don't quite understand. By the way, nice jersey matchup there. I really have to say the red of Benfica against the blue jerseys of Lyon. I really like that matchup. But I have to say, uh, Lyon gets the equalizer at a point where Benfica is really just hanging in there. And they get the winner. I think it was, uh, it was kind of a really fluky goal where the keeper hurls the ball out right in front of the Benfica striker who just has the, the uh, put his foot there and put the ball into the empty net because the goal was way out of the goal. This is this one must hurt and I have to say Lyon is really in trouble and so Leipzig leads this group uh, with six points despite having lost at home to Lyon because Lyon lost uh, now it has four it has four points as does Zenit and Benfica gets the first win. Let's talk the other two groups. Uh, shall we go to the big one? Yes let's go to the group F. Uh, let's really go back. Um, works this way. Um, Barcelona scores a very early goal one that I didn't see live because just at that moment Liverpool had scored, they switch over in the conference and then uh, have to go back. It was really, I thought, this might be a goal, don't go now. It was a goal, Messi scored uh, after an assist from Arto after three minutes and you think, oh yeah, this is, Aslav is gonna be in trouble. Uh, why is Barcelona playing in yellow was also not quite clear to me because I think e either one of the other kids would have worked, maybe because of the blue numbers of Slavia. Um, I don't mind the yellow kit, it just looked a little bit odd to me. I actually think it would have even worked if they play in their uh, first choice kit, but hey. What do I know about kit? About kit, how, how, how they should play. Uh, and then Slavia took a fight to Barcelona and really put them on back foot. And if it wasn't for Ter Stegen, I'm absolutely sure Barcelona would not have had a chance in that one. Uh, Slavia sure, 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 has got at least uh, two if uh, before the half. They get then their fully deserved goal right after the half and at that point Slavia is actually going for the win. And one of those rare attacks, uh, Suarez pokes the ball in from the touchline and it hits uh, the, I think it's actually an attacker from Slavia and puts it in his own net. Uh, absolutely blow to the guts. I mean, I actually think I can feel with Slavia a lot because this is exactly, this is in a way how Lask lost in Lisbon, uh, Lisbon, uh, Sporting. You have the big boy on the ropes and they are just, ah, they, uh, they are clinically. Slavia would have deserved the draw. They had a big chance at the end, but no, it was not to be. Uh, Barcelona gets a second win. Uh, not convincingly, but they get it. And if you're a big team, that's what you gotta do. So you have to admire that, but Slavia really should have gotten more out of, out of that one. Uh, Inter Dortmund was also a weird game for first 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 of all. Um, Dortmund playing in their league jerseys and in all yellow, which um, was a smart choice because it preserved kind of the um, you know the club's colors. Yes, they could have played in this red third jersey that they have, but I think I was very happy that they played in all yellow because against Inter they really don't have many chances. I think still that the one with the black top, the cup jersey, although I like it less, would have worked. But okay, Dortmund had a lot of possession but didn't do anything with it. Uh, and it was Inter who was more da dangerous. And um, if Nico Schulz would be more aware of the offside trap. Uh, the 1-0 would not have happened. Uh, Martinez, really nice pass from De Vrij and Martinez is clear on goal and makes the goal and it was very clear if you see the replay that this was not an offside. Um, I think I even saw it in the first replay. So yeah, um, Inter then is just doing what Inter 
real like an Italian team is hanging back. I mean, being more dangerous, conceding possession to the others, but uh, being quite da dangerous and the more uh, I don't want to say. Yeah, the more dangerous team. Uh, in a way, the, the one team that has control because uh, they just, I don't want to say park the bus, but uh, seemingly and let Dortmund come and Dortmund cannot do anything. You you had this feeling that Dortmund can do so, so, so much more, but they cannot manage to do it. And so, yeah, uh, second half, similar picture. And at a point, then Dortmund finally starts to open up and then they catch a counter and a penalty is given. That Bürki saves on Martinez. That was a big let-off, uh, has to be said. Uh, but in the end, Dortmund cannot. I mean, they, I think the biggest chance was right at the end of the first half. I cannot remember any other good chance where Hamdanovic pulls a, a nice save. Uh, Dortmund cannot find much, and Inter runs another counter attack. Kataleva puts it into the net. You had the option. Uh, to pass it off, but you know, makes it himself a fair game. And it's 2 0 for Inter, who are now back in business. Dortmund Inter level on points, Inter holding the head to head for now. And it is uh, four, four points there. Barcelona is on top. We have the return leg in Dortmund. Let's see how that will go. And then we're in Group E uh, with Liverpool getting a very early goal uh, through Oxley chamberlain nice wide range shot, although not with much power. I had the feeling that actually this could have been better defended, let's put it that way. Um, then Genk is actually uh, putting pressure on Liverpool in many situations, but just cannot find the breakthrough. When they find the breakthrough, it was an offside at first, it was not all that clear because it was, we thought it was a foul given. No. Um, was not to be and early in the second half Oxford Chamberlain with a really really nice goal uh, with the outside of his foot putting it high up this was a really nicely taken goal and the nice goals that didn't stop for Liverpool uh, the one from uh, Mane Firmino, Firmino with a sensational assist uh, Sa um, Sadio Mane uh, is then served by Mo Salah from, from that and was a really well taken goal. Um, and also third one, what Salah is pulling there uh, with the footwork, really nice, 4 nil. Genk puts one back, which was probably was so the form was too high, but yeah, that completes the perfect start for the Premier League. And most of the Premier League wins were rather convincingly, I have to say, unlike the La Liga wins. And then the big one, Salzburg against Napoli. Um, Salzburg having a nervous start, although they get the 1 0, but was rightly chalked off for offside. Gotta say, Holland would have scored that, that one. And then Dries Mertens just with a nice com 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 combination triangle uh, headed in, uh, a header into the path of Dries Mertens. And Dries Mertens just thunders it into the near corner. Uh, I have to say, you. I don't want to blame the Salzburg goalie Stankovic. I have a little bit in for him because I don't think he should be the national team goalie. Um, I don't want to put blame on him, but I think a really good goalkeeper is saving that shot because it's right where you are. I mean, it goes right over his head and he's a tall dude. So, um, was not quite happy with that. But then Salzburg takes it to Napoli and creates chances, uh, more chances. And, you know, for once they're not converting. They need to get a penalty, Malquit uh, making a stupid foul that Holland puts in. Second half, picture continues, Salzburg is going forward with attack at that point. Uh, they also had to change goalkeepers, which probably should was already not looking all that good. But guess who finds the breakthrough again? That is Mertens, it's sensational. It was Malquit again entering the box. Uh, doesn't find anywhere, puts it in, it's deflected off Ulmer uh, right into the path of Dries Mertens, who is clear on goal. He has now more goals scored for Napoli than Diego Maradona. I would, I want to see how many games he played, because he might have played more games than Maradona. But you know, taking over a big legend like Mar Maradona, that counts at least for something. Salzburg though comes back and Holland gets the equalizer after a really nice cross from Yunusovic and at that moment then he is celebrating this goal really leaving it going with the uh, uh, 
with the people and clearly thought hey, we can get it and right off the kick of Napoli hits back Insigne who just came on puts the ball in, in the net and this is what uh, Salzburg has to learn and don't get me wrong I was for Salzburg because for points for Austria but I like Napoli a lot more than Salzburg let's be although Salzburg is spectacular to watch and 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 so on I think if you watch Salzburg games you're guaranteed goals uh, but Insigne that's what you do you just hit them back because you're the more experienced team hit them back and Salzburg had no comeback and so yeah Napoli and Liverpool are clear in that group Salzburg needs to get at least a win at a point in Naples and probably a home win against Liverpool and if you take the points against Genk uh, to have a chance but yeah this was also a great game yesterday a lot of things there were many early early goals it was really exciting in many ways to watch um, and yeah uh, but we also get a clear picture many groups maybe except the last two uh, it's maybe not as clear, but it was definitely a better match. I have to, I have to say the groups E to H are more enjoyable to watch than the other four. So that's something I've already realized. And yeah, that's how it goes. Let me know what you thought about yesterday's games. Um, drop a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos or playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm gonna wish you a wonderful day. Bye.